They don't make these things for people my height. Um, all right, it's, um, it's pretty awesome and incredible to, to be able to sit here and hear former presidents and, and VIPs and, and my dad's bosses um, speak so favorably above him. I'm, I'm applying for a lot of jobs right now. And I... Uh, <laughs> Um, I just hope in that like three years time or so, whatever, whatever place is dumb enough to hire me is, I hope my bosses look as favorably upon me as, as, as my dads do. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things that I took from my dad. Um, principally is my love for candy. I, uh, and it, it, my mom always gets on me because I'm always eating sweets and I get cavities real easy. And you just, you should have seen her face the last time I walked to doc, into Dr. Lee's office and she got the bill from the dentist. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, my dad was the, was the greatest speech writer that I, that I ever met in my life. And I've had the opportunity to, to hear him speak um, so, so eloquently on, on, on so many different topics over the course of the, the 21 years that I had the blessing of sharing with him. And I just remember at his Hall of Fame speech, I was, I was crying like a baby. Um, and I say all that to say that, you know, any chance of me preparing words for today was thrown out the window 21 years ago. <laughs> but um, <laughs> there's a couple of funny things I want to share about my dad. Um, after basketball practices at Love It and... Um, anybody in the building that's a Love It parent or, or that went to Love It can attest to this. I would be, my, my parents had this rotation schedule where my mom would pick me up from school some days and take me back to the house. My dad would pick me up to school from school some days um, if he was getting off work around the same time that I was getting out of practice. And uh, my dad, Kathy's right, my dad was never on time. He just... <laughs> You know, if, if practice ended at 6.30, my dad would pick me up at 8.45. I re <laughs> it's just, that's just the way he operated. Um, and you know, I, I wish I had had the perspective when I was younger to, to understand why my dad was always late to pick me up. He wasn't, he wasn't late because, you know, he had just, it had just slipped his mind or something. He was, he was late because he was doing the important work of impacting people's lives around the globe. And if I had, if I had, had the same perspective that I do now, um, when I was a teenager, I, I would have told him to take all the time that he needed. Um, <laughs> I don't wanna, I don't wanna run too long here. Um, so I would, I, I would like to speak on some special moments that I had, to, that I got to share with my dad ever since I moved back home to Atlanta after graduating college in, uh, in May. And there was one morning when I remember I, I'd heard about this book called Good, Beautiful, and Kind by Pastor Rich Via Das, who's based out of Brooklyn. And I told my mom the night before I left for Barnes & Noble, I said, I really want to go get this book. I've, I heard about it on Instagram, and I've been dying to read it. So the next morning, I was, I was at Barnes & Noble's at 9.59 in the morning, one minute before they opened. And um, I, when I went there, they, they looked around for the book, and they got it for me. And I, I read half the book before I even left the store. And, and when I came home, um, I was, it was a really special moment. I got, to, I got to share some of the beautiful passages of that writing with my dad. And for those of you that aren't familiar with that title, Good, Beautiful, Good and Beautiful and Kind um, is a title adopted from, uh, from a Langston Hughes poem called Tired. And that poem reads, I am so tired of waiting for the world to become good and beautiful and kind. 
let us take a knife and cut this world in two and see what worms are eating at the rind. And um, that poem resonated a lot with me, not only, not only a couple months ago, but also today, because just, just hearing the stories of, of my father today, I'm, I'm reminded that my dad really had a hunger to get to the core of things, to get to the core of people, to get to the core of this world. And I truly believe that's what drove him into our hearts. And he had this massive magnetic gravitational pull and he, he pulled us into his orbit. And, and, and we were just so blessed to get to spend the time that we did with him. Um, and I, and I, wanna, I, wanna end, uh, I wanna end my words today with just a little bit of the perspective that I've adopted over the, over the course of last night and this morning during these beautiful services. Um, my dad passed away at age 58. My mother's father, Katumba, from which I bear my name, passed away at age 54. Over the last three years, I've witnessed not only in myself, but I've personally experienced with other people my age. People, are, people my age feel like we're waiting around for a purpose, like we're waiting around for a calling. We're waiting for an important opportunity or something monumental to happen to us to take action so we can step into the lives of others. But I want to remind everybody who's young in the crowd today and even the older folks in here that as long as you've got people around you, there's ways that you can help. There's ways that you can step in and touch the lives of others. Um, and my dad was a gigantic, beautiful, shining example of that. Um, and I'm going to be thinking about him for the rest of my life. So I love all of you guys. Thank you for coming out today. Um, and I'll leave the rest to my beautiful sister and my handsome brother, JJ. Sorry, Ryan's a bit taller than me. I want to thank Isai for hosting us. Um, and I want to thank everybody for coming out, friends, family, associates. Um, as it says on the screen, my name is Jean-Jacques Matumbo. And I want to clarify, my name is Jean-Jacques Dikembe Matumbo Jr. And... And that's something I've grappled with and struggled with my entire life, having to live up to that name. Uh, I didn't prepare words today because I wanted to speak from the heart, but we are all witnesses to the life of Dikembe Mutombo and his greatness and what that means to all of us. He's impacted us in some way. My father passed on September 30th. And two years ago, September 30th was my last day of an internship, and it was the last day of my life where ignorance was bliss. My father was with my mother in Japan, and when he came home, and my mom told me, Jean-Jacques, we're going to the hospital with your father. That was the last time I saw my father walk without any support in my life. But my father was resilient. Anybody who knows Dikembe knows that he was not gonna give up. I saw him go to physical therapy. I took him to physical therapy, whether it was the replacement of a catheter, or there was screening for cancer. All of those things I witnessed. I used to have dreams that I would see my father walk again. I never saw my father walk again. When people would visit my father, they knew that he was eager to get back out into the world. He would ask about the travels they'd been on and when he could join, and he was eager to work. 
but he didn't get to witness any of the work that he had started anymore, and he will no longer be able to witness it. But we all get to witness it, and we have witnessed it. President Bill Clinton is a witness. Masai Ujiri is a witness. My mother, Rose Matumbo, is a witness. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver is a witness. Georgetown teammate Alonzo Mourning is a witness. Georgetown coach John Thompson was a witness. President Kennedy says something in his uh, inaugural address saying, God's work on earth must truly be our own. And it's something that always stood out to me because I believe that's what my father embodied, that he tried to actualize positive change in this world. In the 2000s, I would go visit my dad in Houston because we were living in Philadelphia, and he would have a miniature model of what would become the Biamba Marie Matumbo Hospital. In 2015 and 2016, I got to see that model in real life. He actualized his ideas. God's work on earth did come to life. And when my father was sick, I was speaking to him in the room once. There was a hospital bed beside the bed that he used to sleep on. And uh, we were having a private conversation, and I just was talking about Africa and all the things that we could do in this world and how we can make it better. And my father just looked at me and said, do you think I've done that? And I think we all know the answer that he has done that. Thank you to everybody for coming. Both my brothers are much taller than me. On behalf of my family, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has come from all over the city, the country, and the world to celebrate the life and legacy of my dad, Dikembe Mutombo. We have heard a lot about who my dad was and what he meant to so many people this weekend. He was larger than life, a giant, an icon, a legend. We have heard about his boundless generosity, his inspirational spirit, his genius, and how he was so willing to take care of others before himself. And I thank you for sharing all those stories. And I hope now for a moment, you'll let me share the perspective and memories from a certified, as my family will let you know, daddy's girl. <laughs> for as long as I can remember, people have always asked me what it's like to have a famous dad. And over the years, my answers have changed depending on my age or even the person I was talking to, to even something as small as my pops and I's last conversation. So here's the truth. My daddy was my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> 